Let's say you have a Synology NAS. It's working fine, you've hosted your website on it, your email server, your data, everything else. You're backing up your photos from your phone, your family members are using it to add data to it, you have your media collection on it, and one fine day right in the middle of the day, you lose power. There's a blackout. Files are corrupted, you lose all your data. You don't want that to happen to you, do you? Well, that's the reason why I wanted to tell you about a UPS today. We're going to be adding a UPS to my Synology DS920 Plus because let's be honest, this bad boy here is keeping a lot of my data and the last thing I want is an unexpected blackout or a power outage. The next thing you know, the drive is corrupted, all my data is gone, I'm crying in the corner. <laughs> I don't want that. So today, I'm going to be taking you through how to set up a UPS device with your Synology to ensure if there is a power outage, your NAS safely shuts down. Let's get into it. So what does a UPS do? Well, it's in the name. UPS stands for Uninterrupted Power Supply. So for any reason, if there's a power outage, a UPS device will continue to power your Synology NAS or any brand NAS or any device until it safely shuts itself down. How does it do that? A UPS will come with a data port, whether that be a network port or a USB port that you can use to connect your UPS to your NAS device. When the power goes off, the UPS will send information to your Synology NAS or any other device telling your device that, hey, there has been a power outage, it's time to shut down. So what we're gonna be doing today is we'll be setting up this ION F10 UPS device with my Synology DS920 Plus NAS. Let's quickly get this unboxed. I'm not expecting anything crazy in there, so just the device. There we go. All right, and we have a user guide. Pretty straightforward. Let's take this off. Unwrap it. Okay, so let's have a look. In terms of technical specs, this particular UPS has an output power capacity of 490 watts or 850 volts amp. This particular model comes with uh, six total power outlets. You have three surge protected and battery powered outlets and then you have three standard surge protected outlets. The plan here is to plug in the Synology NAS in one of the battery plus surge protected outlets so the power goes off, This, the battery inside this UPS will continue to power the Synology NAS and give it enough time to shut itself down. So there is a USB port right here, let me make sure you can see it, yep. So you connect one end of the USB cable here, another end goes to the USB port on the Synology NAS. The way a UPS works with Synology DS920 Plus is that you have two features. One is to put the Synology in the safe mode where all the critical services and the active dry usage completely stops and the NAS will go into a safe mode where if the power is depleted or the battery dies, the NAS will obviously lose power but there won't be any negative effects given it was already in the safe mode. Then the second option you have is the shutdown option. Shutdown option is only available with a few brands that are certified with Synology. So my expectation here is that this with this particular brand, I will not have the shutdown option, but I will have the safe mode option. So let's go ahead. First thing first, we're gonna turn off the Synology NAS so I can unplug it from the mains and connect it into the UPS supply. Turning your Synology off is as simple as navigating to the profile icon on the top right corner, going to shut down and then clicking OK. We'll just give Synology a few seconds to shut itself down by properly stopping all the processes. Once that's done, we'll unplug the Synology from the mains plug it into the UPS and turn it on. As I can see, the Synology NAS has turned itself down safely completely. All right, so let's plug this in. Let's unwrap this cable. Just plug in the UPS to the mains. All right, so now I have plugged the Synology NAS into the UPS. I have plugged the UPS into the mains. I haven't turned it on just yet. I'm gonna connect the USB cable first. Right, here we have the USB cable in, one end in here, other end at the back of the NAS. Fantastic, let's turn it on. There we go, UPS is turned on. Let's turn the NAS on. Okay, well, 
I just realized I plugged the uh, Synology NAS into just the surge outlet, not the battery plus surge. So I guess it's time to shut it down once more and plug the code into the battery plus surge outlet. Don't do what I did, okay? Just plug it into the right spot. As you can see, I've actually plugged this um, into just the surge outlet, whereas it should have been in surge and battery. So, um, oh, there we go. So I've shut the NAS down. Let's just plug this into the right port. Now it's time to turn on the Synology NAS. As soon as we hear the audible beep of a successful boot, we are going to go into the configuration options and configure the UPS device itself. Okay, you heard the beep. That means the boot up is now uh, completed. Now to set up the UPS option, go into your control panel, navigate to the hardware and power option. Then on the top bar, go to the UPS tab and within UPS, click on enable UPS support. Now within the USB type, you can select USB UPS, SNMP UPS or Synology UPS server. In this particular instance, because I have connected the UPS uh, to the Synology NAS using the USB cable. So I'm just gonna be selecting USB UPS. Now what do we do? Time before Synology NAS enters standby mode is until the battery is low or we can select a time. I personally don't want to wait for the battery to deplete before the NAS goes into the safe mode. So what I'd be doing is I'd be choosing the customized time option and then putting in 60 seconds, which is about a minute before the uh, NAS goes into the safe mode. So let's just do that. Now, given the ION UPS itself is not in the compatibility list, there is a little checkbox here that I can check for UPS to shut itself down. And you can kind of see if you hover over the information icon here, it says the UPS power off function varies by brand and model. Please simulate a power outage to ensure the function performs as expected. Please refer to helps article for details. So what I'll be doing is for the purpose of this test, I will be simulating a power outage and to show you guys if this particular brand works with the shutdown option or not, I will be ticking this box here and then hit apply. All right, so that's done. You can also find information on the device that is connected to your Synology NAS by clicking the device information. Now, given this model isn't officially supported, I'm guessing it's gonna be limited information, but let's have a look. Ah, here we go. So you've got manufacturer value one, uh, model 850, that is in line with the 850 volt ampere uh, uh, model that I have here. Status is connected. Uh, you get battery status which is 91 percent and the estimated battery time at 91 percent here is 5460 seconds which is a roughly 90 minutes or, or or about an hour and a half and that that's pretty good so what we'll do is we'll close it now i'm just gonna click on apply once more because hey you know it doesn't hurt all right okay it's time to simulate a power outage well, what I'm gonna do is simply take the power cord of the UPS out of the mains and see what happens if something pops on the screen, if there's anything else. Well, what I'm expecting is given I've set the a time to one minute, so I've customized the standby mode time to one minute. What I'm hoping is uh, within a minute of taking the cable out, the Synology NAS will put itself into standby mode. But not only that, the Synology NAS should also shut itself down. But as we know, that is dependent on the model itself. So let's see if that happens or not. Time to unplug it. All right, here we have it. Let's do it. Oh, here we go. There's no more mains here. This is all just working on the UPS. This is currently now battery powered. I'm gonna see what happens within a minute. Oh, I just got a notification. Server is on battery. Another beep. Just to remind us that the server itself is on battery. Oh, Synology NAS is currently on battery power. Notification also gives you the estimated battery time. So 19 minutes, which isn't exactly what the device information here said. So here it said, oh, it's changed now. It's 1,080 seconds. It has been two minutes since I received that notification. And it doesn't look like the NAS has gone into standby mode. Okay, so it looks like the Synology NAS is going to shut itself down, which is fantastic. It's stopping all the services one after the other. 
which is good to see. So the dry server is stopped, USB copy service is stopped, active backup for Google Workspace, Cloud Sync. Uh, it's good to see that services are now being stopped. And the expectation here is that the Synology NAS will shut itself down very soon. Well, let's see if that happens. Also audibly, I can tell that the hard drives aren't as engaged and they, as they were before. Just the noise of the read and write out of the hard drive just isn't there anymore. Oh, oh looks like the NAS is now in standby mode. That's fantastic. So it's working as expected. Now that the Synology NAS was on the battery power, uh, it first stopped all the services, went into standby mode and then shut itself down. Fantastic. Now what we should do now is let's just plug the power back in and see if Synology turns itself on automatically. Beautiful. As you can see, we plugged the power cord back into the AC mains. Uh, the UPS turned on. It sent the communication back to NAS that, hey, mains is back on now. And the NAS turned itself on. This is fantastic. I'm, I'm just really angry I didn't buy it earlier. Well, there you have it. Not only does this particular model support standby, but it also supports the shutdown functionality. There's nothing else I can ask for here. So here's what my recommendation is. If you own a Synology NAS, you obviously don't have to go for this particular model, but given I only spent about 150 Australian dollars on this, this is so worth the investment. Go out and get yourself a UPS device today because the data that you have in your Synology NAS is way more valuable than just spending $150 on a UPS device. Well, there you have it. That's how you can set up a UPS with your Synology NAS and save your data when there is a power cut please go out there and grab yourself a UPS today. I'm gonna to include the link to this particular product uh, from Amazon in the description. If you have questions, you're welcome to leave a comment on this video. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and hit that little bell icon so when I upload my next video, you get notified. Well, until my next video, take care of yourself. I'll see you later, bye.